I got reverse trolled by my friend because I did too good a job convincing him to, that Dvorak was the superior layout, and mm -hmm. then he actually adopted it, and now I can't use his computer anymore. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual. I'll be switching the bits, trying to uh, keep track of everything pushing all the buttons. Sometimes things will explode. Always trying out new stuff. And that sound was one Jordan Swang. Hello, Jordan Swang. <sighs> Hello, Ben Stone. And that uh, infinite void of perpetual silence is one Pedro Mateus. <laughs> yeah, it, it screams internally. He's just, he's trapped in the phantom zone forever. <laughs> and together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic, how about his form? You know him, you love him. Toucane, Cocaine, Voltron. So, uh, we were talking about eggs just a minute ago, and that reminded me, earlier this week, I stabbed myself with an egg. You stabbed yourself with an egg. Do, I do tell. I, I quit being helpful, and I was genuinely trying to be helpful. It's not often I get to peel eggs. Mm. Do, doing uh, hard-boiled? Hard-boiled eggs. as a friend's house, and she was doing deviled eggs or something like that for a thing at work. And I'm like, I want to play. So, <laughs> and I'm, I, I mangled some eggs. Fair enough. But. Yeah, I, I, the shell stabbed me. Ah. <laughs> and I was like, this is some bullshit. Um, I had to pull a piece of egg out of my thumb. Did I learn anything? Did I slow down? Nay, I just went uh, right back to it. So, excellent. Yeah. Be careful. So I, we're, we're currently recording on an Amazon warehouse NVMe drive. Ooh. Ooh, living dangerously, I, are we? <laughs> I, st I still want that Amazon Basics, like, 4090, man. Yeah, I, right? I want them to do that. <laughs> right. The Amazon Basics GPU, absolutely, yes. Dude, let's be perfectly real. We'd all buy that in a minute. Um, This was, because we were talking about this in the pre-pre-super shows, and ah, here's a plug. Go back and listen to that if you're a patron. Uh, the uh, NVMe drives are just ridiculously cheap. We're not talking, like, you know, from manufacturers that with names that you cannot announce, uh -uh. like Samsung drives. This is a it's a 970 Evo Pro, two terabyte, eighty six bucks. I'm like, you know what? I need another one of those because I know they work. Because um, what's it? John, <laughs> you remember uh, everything that uh, every single one of those names got you. Yes. You know it. <laughs> you know it got it. See, I'm, I'm sentimental and shit like that. It just took me a minute because I'm old. Um, I've been using that drive. Hammered on it. Works great. And it's a Gen 3. It's like 80 bucks. Let's just buy another one. And Amazon's like, you want to buy a used one? I'm like, not from like John or somebody. He's like, no, no, no. Amazon Warehouse. We got you covered. And warranty and everything. 63 bucks. For pretty a two cheap. terabyte. And we made room. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It replaced for, for a little stick of gum, some juicy yeah, right. fruit. Yeah. Well, it replaced this. And this, this is a very classic drive. This started like our Linux Themecast journey with this guy here. And we were talking about that. Okay, do you have a modern Kingston drive? If you bought one, because you might have, because they're super cheap. This is a 240 gig. I know for a fact, because all these boxes have modern versions of this drive. I have the 480 gig version in my box. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can get the like 15, 20 bucks. Those are just made out of plastic. Mm -hmm. Like I never thought about it. I'd never pulled this drive out. It's been years and years. This thing is cold rolled steel, man. It's not even aluminium. Like this thing, you could brain somebody with one of these. Uh, pick this up. This was like back when Newegg before they went evil. They were on sale for like ninety dollars, and it was an amazing deal. It was one of those deals where you wake up and you go, "Well, I guess I'm buying an uh, <laughs> SSD drive." <laughs> This the, the, you you got those to replace those like old OCZ ones, right? The the Evos. Oh, I'm still running those oh. for recording. This was just abstract storage. Like mm. what? Two, another two hundred four for ninety bucks? Are you kidding? Of course. But the reason I even bringing any of this up is this was the first time. This last NVMe drive was the first time in my life where I had to buy one of these. Hey, I have one of those. <laughs> what is this? Well, it holds NVMe drives because I now have one with nothing. Now I've had spare NVMe drives, but I was like, oh, that's going to go in this or that's going to go in that. 
I have, I have no place to put this uh, 960 Evo, but this one, well, do you have a rubber O-ring around yours, Pedro? Uh, yes. <laughs> it has the rubbery bits. <laughs> See, mine's NVMe only, though. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm not this cool. One does, I, don't, uh, I don't have that. SD cards and USB flash drives. <laughs> I, 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 I I just have a notebook. I'm I'm not I'm not cool. I, you guys, I don't have books. That's what I got. This is like twelve or thirteen bucks. You can find them on Amazon. I'm sure they're all the same yes. thing. This is a JJC. <laughs> it's on our like studio equipment thing. I put it up there. I'm like, yay! No, because you, you well, we got these drives. What do you do with them? You just toss them in a drawer somewhere, right? Stack them on a the desk. Mm. These little sticks of gum. You gotta. But... <laughs> you have to be careful with them. Yes. Mm. <laughs> It, it's it's not you don't have to be quite as careful as like micro SD cards because like you can't lose these as easily. No, but, like, I, I keep those under the uh, stove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> un, under under the monitor stand, there's an entire. Fortunately, like, micro SD cards, at least in the sizes I buy them, are small enough to be like, and that's where they're gonna stay. I'm just gonna go to the <laughs> sleeve yeah. I have and get another one out. Yeah, yeah. If it's if it's like a two terabyte micro SD card, then you're like. Right, time to, time you to know we need to out. clean and bind this thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, what, I take that back. That's after half a day with like a clothes anchor or something. Trying. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you try and find the longest thing. Maybe <laughs> daisy chain a couple yeah. of them. Get the get the hook. Right. Yeah. Oh man, Jordan is a. Uh, oh man, uh, I did tune in a little bit. Jordan mm-hmm. and Empty are doing a um, Baldur's Gate three multiplayer thing. Watching them like work out because uh, there there was a glowing axe on top of a building and empty it stepped in a trap or something yeah and uh, it's fun uh, way over my head what you guys are like how does that even work do you each have like a couple of characters to control yeah or? yeah so uh uh it can so you can have up to four people in the in the room each person can have one character or if you have less then you can assign an npc to uh whoever so we have um we have them doing two by two um but I actually finished the game yesterday. Not Baldur's Gate, uh, but I've been I've been going through Serious Sam Four with a friend, uh, Striker in uh, in Chat Realm. Uh, he's an old buddy of mine. We've been making it a point to go through all the Serious Sam games because we've been doing that since we were very very wee. Finally got through four, finished it off. Uh, well, Sam, like I just I played like maybe the five. Arthur got me a copy of that forever ago. Yeah, I, like I started it up and I'm like eventually it just seemed like it was like oh, this is like more serious sam 3 which isn't a it, bad thing so it's not though because like serious sam 3 had like parkour and stuff there's like and like a lot of the mechanical improvements from 3 didn't necessarily make it into 4 mm. they have like builds but the builds suck because it's either dual wielding or being able to ride monsters so and this is pretty much more just like riding a Roomba with a sex toy on it right <laughs> dude you can if, if you can if you can get on the wearable you last like three seconds on it because then it just dies it's like the worst thing ever but you can respec and i switch back to the dual pew pews mm-hmm. but dear lord dear lord at the end of that that literally just, that game becomes like you just die and you die and you die and your 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 progression is like try and get a couple inches further when you respawn so you can fucking get to the next checkpoint because when they say there's like a hundred thousand enemies on screen they're not fucking around the problem is there's a hundred fucking thousand enemies on screen and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta deal with them all. Um, I think everybody anything. remembers like, remember the first time you played Sirius Sam, the original and you, you were the first time you were in the desert and you're like, uh, like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, honestly, I think, I think four, I, I, I would put three over four, honestly. Uh, the, the 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 level of design in four really falls apart near the end when it's just like these big open fields and you just get fucking lost because like, you need room for the hundred thousand enemies, then also and also the rest of the game. So like, mm. the, it, it, it kind of falls I apart. Mean, I, there. I'm sure it managed to deliver just chaos, though, right? Oh, it was complete chaos. And at the end, you have to like climb up on this bad guy and like tweak his nipples and like shove C four up his ass. It's 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 the whole thing. Um, but yeah, no. So I get. I guess now. I guess now the next one on the docket is Siberius Mayhem. I don't even I know what that is. That's. The, they they had like the they had a one that takes place in like a snow level or something. They released it a while ago. Okay. I, have, I I have no idea. Uh, but yeah. Pedro, what, you about you? what what about you, Pedro? I'm done talking. <laughs> I too finished the video game this week uh, that I, I had started back in March, uh, and I finally finished my solo playthrough uh, in Supernova difficulty of um, Outer Worlds Space Earth Choice Edition. Which turned out to be a lot easier because one of the things they changed in the Space Race Trace Edition was they removed the level cap, so you can go as high as you want. If you want to just keep farming, you can keep farming. And uh, you become 
basically you can have all the perks, you can have all the skills. So it becomes very, very easy, very, very quickly. But yeah, it's uh that that that's wrapped up. Now I can go and finish uh, Quake Two Requacked. Do we um do we like that in games like when you just get so ridiculously OP by the end of them that there's just like zero challenge, but the whole like I'm just here to wreck shit kicks in. That's a hard yeah. balance to hit because sometimes it will get boring. You're like, well, this is no fun anymore. Yeah, I, I, th- <laughs> I think really it's it's a pacing thing because like one because like once you really earn that like being able to just smack everything mm-hmm. after struggling through it, it feels really good for the back couple mm-hmm. levels. Just be like, I will always you get die it. and you die and you die and yeah, platinum like all the credit in the world for like the sync that they've done with um and bayonetta like when you're going up the tower to like get to the last boss. There's uh, some baddies that you run into pretty regularly, but you're just racking the snot out of these things now. And you're like, I remember the first time I ran into one, I spent 30 minutes trying to kill one. And you just start, you wreck, like, I think they, like, there was like three or four at you at one time. You get done, then you get an achievement. It just says, feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, once you have all the shit unlocked, Baldur's Gate 3 has a lot of that too, where like, you, you're struggling a bit, and then you unlock that extra attack, or you unlock like third level spells, and then you're just like, <laughs> fireball and my problem solved <laughs> mm. but but again like a, a good good paced games like let you have that for a little bit and then it's like oh now you have to actually try again or you, you have had, like you had the uh, uh what was it uh the castlevania what was it um lords of shadow the symphony of the uh, symphony of the night the one that where you start off like the the playstation one with everything uh, yeah yes, and you yes, just start like, off with everything, everything and then and like, death yeah. comes and takes it away yeah. <laughs> you're like oh and then i quit playing <laughs> The the first Assassin's <laughs> Creed mad. game d- did that too. I don't like that. I, I don't like being like told, given like a real fun character to play, and then be like, okay, now you got to wait till the end of the game to actually have fun with this. Mm-hmm. It's kind of shitty. Even then, though, I mean, that's such a hard balance to strike, isn't it? Because if you get everything at the beginning, sometimes you just get bored. And, I don't know. Anyway, what's the difficulty curve going to be on the horse this week? I mean, the difficulty her- curve on the horse is flat because it's just a puddle on the ground. It's the steam. steam. Uh, Update. Oh. Woo! It's it's shocking. I I just finished uh, disenchanted too. I'm surprised Pedro so let you have the story. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, we're I got a dual shock here. He's not the only one with the PlayStation controller. Uh, but yeah, uh, Valve is uh, adding some new stuff in October, specifically the ability to filter games based on uh, controller support. And the first, uh, the first class controllers. That everyone, doing... everyone, Pedro's got two. Oh, <laughs> so Actually, pro. I have three, but I only have two hands. So fuck you. <laughs> Put one in your mouth and just keep it there for the rest of the podcast. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Valve wants you to be able to search for games in Steam based on controller support. There's a lot of uh, PlayStation uh, games now on Steam that have uh, that take advantage of the features within the DualShock and DualSense controllers. So uh, they're adding a new questionnaire for the Steamworks devs to uh, say what kind of controller you have, and soon you'll be able to uh, filter based on DualShock support. And as a DualShock user, I'm really excited about this because it can be kind of hit or miss in DualShock land. Sometimes you got to play like the button translation game in your head. Sometimes it's like a, a, a in-game option that you can switch. Sometimes Steam input plays nice with it. Sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of a, a bit of a shit show. So having a way to make that more consistent is going to be really, really good. Um, and especially it's going to be a thing where you don't get to, you don't get to get the rude awakening of, oh, this shit doesn't work with my controller. Once you actually boot up the game, you get a little bit of pre-warning there. Yeah, it, it is a very good idea because compared to like the typical, um, Xbox controllers, I couldn't remember the name of the console. Uh, the dual shock and the dual sense have gyros. They have the touchpad, which yes, you can use it as a mouse, but that's like the least that they can do. You can do like proper gestures and everything on the touchpad. And there are games that make use of it. You have the light bars and the, especially on the dual sense, you have the, the haptic feedback, uh, like the adaptive triggers and the haptic vibration and all that. So the, the, the speaker of, in the controller, there's a lot the, of games yeah, that do stuff. The speaker in the that. controller. And there's a lot of games, especially games that were at one point uh, PlayStation exclusives that already have that stuff built in that they could just use 
if people were aware that they were even there, because most people aren't. So this is good. This is very good. If you clearly label the name as uh, the game as supporting that functionality, maybe there won't be as many refunds either, because people only have that one controller. They don't have seven. <laughs> you know, for me, I'm just thinking about all this. And I'm like, you know, it supports what it supports. I'm I'm very flexible. I'll play with the Xbox S or the uh, PS4 controller. It just depends. But the only thing I'm reading when I see this is we're going to see like partial dual shock support. <laughs> in, in, in the Steam factoids, we're still learning about this game. Maybe, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe it'll work with your dual shock. And I know well, Pe Pedro's explained to me uh, like the extra stuff. Like, how much is that controller again? Uh, the dual sense is uh, fifty pounds, so probably like sixty dollars around there. Extra mark. That's yeah. the new PS Five no. one. Yeah, yes, nine, that's the base nine, PS5 one. Canadian. If you want to get the like the turbo and dual sense with the, the replaceable, the yeah, uh, with the replaceable um, analog sticks and D pads and everything else, that one is two hundred dollars. <laughs> Does it come with or, a or, or or <laughs> you you could get the 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 PlayStation <laughs> Wii U thing the the. Oh yeah, you can get that for two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you know. Oh, oh man! Speaking of that thing, better work as a controller. Oh man, wouldn't that I mean, be it dope is a as controller hell? with a screen in the middle? That that that's it. It would be dope <laughs> as hell if Steam input could actually hook into that display, or you could actually do some shit with that on Linux. That would be really cool. Actually. That would be. Oh man, <laughs> install yeah, install Steam Link on the uh, PlayStation U. <laughs> We're or even just use this like an input device or some shit. Yeah, way too busy with our new. Ampere Ultra dev platforms. We all want one of these. <laughs> Not for that price. No. Come, well, okay, fine. How about this I, price? I, I, Is that better? Are you happy? I, 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 I want it for that <laughs> price. I don't want to pay that price. I mean, Someone else can pay that for you me. You know what? For 128 core CPU with a, a lot of the gigabytes of the DDR4 and uh, 6 by 16, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. We get up to five. You know what? That's still not a bad price. Five grand. Um, so. What makes this special? This is the Ampere uh, Ultra. It's a super arm chip. You know, typically you're going to be seeing these in servers, but this is a nice little desktop unit that you can buy to do platform stuff. You've, a couple of YouTubers have gotten hold of them. It's water cooled. And the reason we're talking about it is because on their page, they're like, yo, you want to play some Steam on this thing? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. Because let's face it. Gaming on x86, people? That is so 2023, 10? yeah, current year. 2010, uh, yeah, really. <laughs> so, I mean, if you've been jealous about all the hoops that uh, current M1, M2 Mac users are having to jump through in order to play their x86 games, now you can join in the fun yourself. <laughs> so all you need is that, you know, basic 2.6K, you know, basic base unit. You don't need 128 core. You need some Proton. And you need a little box 86 and you can kind of play steam. I have to assume they, they say you can, they say everything's gravy on this. And this has been done with an NVIDIA RTX 4080. That's right. NVIDIA has got arm drivers, by the way, if you're curious, even for their new cards, they, they do. It's, it's on that download page and it's really mm -hmm. weird. I'm like one day, one day I'll try, I'll, I'll have a computer where I could install those on from the run file. Right. I mean, it is kind of weird, man. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of instructions and a whole lot of not results with this, which is always kind of surprising when you see something like that. But man, I, uh, dude, uh, Amp here, send me one of these because like a lot of people I've seen, I wouldn't look, looked at the uh, YouTube videos are like, let's run windows on it. And then they Why? pop the glue stick back in their mouth. You guys got this far. I, I, I have the know-how and technology to actually make a video on Linux showing this off, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Call me. And I, I want to play one. I want to play with one, man. Oh, yeah, yeah they're, they're cool little machines. Or big machines. I mean, it's not very little. My question is, why, why, why are you using Box 8664? No, it's not. Because you're just making your job harder for yourself. Fex is in a much better position when it comes to, you know, running Steam, as in it can actually do it and it can run Proton. The performance is still a bit iffy, but then again, so is the performance on Box 86. Bo Box so, is a little, uh, it's a little older though, isn't it? Like, Box yes, 86 uh, been it's been around mature. for longer. But yeah, the so thing, that, that, that's probably why. 
Yeah, the thing uh, with Box 86 is it only runs 32-bit applications, and Box 64 only runs 64-bit applications. In a mixed environment like Steam and video games, use facts, please. God. <laughs> or at least well, I, I mean, we don't know like for all we know is like on their whatever reason their architecture there's like no nah, just like both well yeah yeah th- and that, that's the other thing too when you're when you're dealing with like embedded hardware like this there there's a lot of weird like low-level platform stuff and maybe maybe whoever was working on it's just like box 86 is the one i know so that's the one i'm gonna get working get it working with as opposed to having to pivot to Vex. I know, I know, Pedro. If you were in charge of the world, everything would be sense. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, and we'd get the man- maniacal laughter too. It'd be brilliant. It'd, it'd just be great. Yeah. You'd be full of smiles 24 7. And you really want to think. My first thought was like, man, can you even deliver non X86 with uh, Steam? With Steam. And, you know, you're like, you brought up the M series, which you know, I was like, okay, how many native games are there for? the uh arm base max which is this more or less than you we were thinking Tw- here 26 i would have thought that would have so this is m1 and uh and rosetta uh supported um a little lower than i would have thought i would have thought it would maybe be like closer 26 to like 50. native straight up yeah. native. i would have expected closer to like 50 but like yeah it still still double digits right like um mm-hmm. but the the one thing i'm interested in is our uh because because you, you bring up a valid point, like, how do you do they have like architecture separation or not? Uh, because with x86, that like you would just ship both binaries. Uh, and if you are on a 32 bit machine, you use 32 bit um, binary. And if you're on 64 bit, use a 64 bit binary uh, in OS 10. I don't really know how that works. I remember when uh, I was doing app builds for iOS. When they just started introducing the 64-bit ARM iPhones, they were doing that all in fat binaries. So there would be one binary uh, that has both the 64-bit and 32-bit code in it at the same time. So I, I don't know how they, they pull that off. Maybe because I do know Apple has like some universal app image thing, but mm. I don't know. I mean, a- Apple's is like, own, this is where it's going to be interesting when we start seeing more adoption on the uh, desktop with ARM because they, mm-hmm. things like that need to get worked out. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I'm sure every, I'm sure Unity and uh, Unreal Engines just chomp it at the bit to have that as a native export. But they're probably not. They, they, <laughs> they, they might even be able to use an Allen key wrench to assemble all of it. IKEA. Yeah, we've got to talk about uh, new games coming out. One of them, which is uh, I think caught all of our attention, is called Calax. It is IKEA the game. It is a multiplayer game in which you attempt to assemble furniture, but only one person can read the instructions. Uh, and has to instruct the other people. Uh, and then if one person is not cooperating, you can throw them into space because, you know, all Ikea furniture assembly results in murder, at least in my house. Um, the level select, though, that better be wandering through a giant maze of furniture and home crap and trying to figure out, do I need to buy another two giant aluminum bowls? They're really convenient to have around the house, but I sort of came here to look. I didn't come here to buy anything. Uh. I don't know, man. Like, I, I had no idea. Like, I don't go to Ikea enough to even know what the hell like Calax is. And like, I did some Googling on them. Like, oh, I kind of had one of those moments. No, it's I, I see this and like this damn well better have like a food court where you can get those uh, meatballs, space balls or whatever you want. to Yes, call <laughs> they got they got the vegan ones now, too. The thing that get my attention, though, I mean, it supports two to two to six players. Oh, so I'm like, all right, online, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe there is a demo, though. There, wait, is there a demo? No, there no. is no demo. No, it is, is online. Released it. Okay, it is online co-op, but it, uh, yeah, no, no demo. I, yet. <laughs> gentlemen, I'm watching the trailer, and I've, I've watched trailer one, trailer two, and I'm still not a hundred percent on what I'm supposed to be doing here. I'm saying, guys, put out a demo, let people play with us, because I'm not spending any money to find out what the game's about because it's not being conveyed very well. Well, there's yeah, 750 Ti. That, 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 that's a, a very, very um, conservative recommendation. <laughs> I mean, for for this game, I don't, I don't think it's going to be that. An RX 550. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, like they, it, the, those two are matched. Yes. Yeah. It, it's 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 a it's like a 2.5D game. I think I think it's fine. Uh, I think it'll be all right. Uh, but again, I've I mean, I understand the concept. You can say like yes, but how does that work out? Please put out a demo for this for your own good, not just for us. Now, up next is uh, a game that we have kind of kept an eye on and thought about 
for a long, long time. Um, nope, it smells uh, like rubber. I see it's in the wrong thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you added this uh, uh, little uh, Yeah, I did. Cluster. I didn't put it in my tabs, Pedro. How come you didn't uh, correct me? Why, why didn't you take over my body and direct my hand to click on the link? Boom. Here we go. This is something that hey, I, I, I was like looking for something to play in the after shows and like right in the show. So we all like, uh, I, have, well, I don't even necessarily like it, but I mean, it's silly enough is like the, everyone says micro machine racing, right? When you think about these types of games mm -hmm. and that's what yeah. this is. And we're always looking for something with online multiplayer because the ratio of silly fun racing games to online multiplayer is completely out of whack. Like I cannot mm -hmm. imagine thinking about doing any type of like racing game. And not having online multiplayer as like step one. So, you know, it's not forklifts. It's not forklifts. But it looks all right. We might try it out in the after shows. And uh, this is available as a demo. So it's something mm -hmm. to play around with. And it's, it's got a Linux demo too. Right? PvP, yep. online co op, couch co op. And it, it looks like silly fun. Like, you know, explosives. Cell, cell shaded Mar voxel Mario Kart. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it could be, I don't know, we might find out. Let me see, what does it take to run? Because this, one of the things, though, has me a little worried is uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a 3080 with four gigs of RAM. I didn't know NVIDIA released the 3080 FU edition. But 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 here's, here's the thing. If you got that 970, it's not going to use, it's not going to hit in that uh, 3.5 gig uh, oh, memory. No. Uh, yeah, memory. you're not going to run into the uh, disabled ROP. You, you only need two gigs out of your 970. <laughs> what do we think about the uh, AMD cards that get released this week? Is anyone excited about those? I, you know, you know what? They're they're in the realm of affordability. I, but like, I I don't have the money now. Oh, well, <laughs> you, you know, like come come October, we'll see what the pricing looks like because AMD likes to fuck around with their pricing quite a bit. Oh yeah, and they, some, they yeah, melt the early adopters in that first month. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, jump eight. <laughs> yeah, and 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 then uh, and then like in in or Nvidia will always like bring some stuff down, or there might be like those thirty eighties might finally come down in price because those are still really good cards. They're well, I'm I mean you know I have a forty seventy like I'm watching it like yeah poking it like do something because I'm not buying it that like it's like three ninety nine maybe maybe yeah. but yeah Nvidia eight, 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 eight ninety nine Canadian that uh, RX seventy eight hundred XT is six ninety nine Canadian. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, and yeah, I know yeah. there's like, you know, the 6700 XT last gen is like, that's still a great card. But like, if you're buying a new card yeah. right now, you, you want the AV1. You, you, you yes. might as well. You might yeah. as well. <laughs> if, if, if you're really like, honestly, if you're really budget restricted, then yeah, go for last, last gen. But if like, you need a card, yeah, which yeah. is different than like, I, I, I want. Yeah, I'd like you a little want. bit of an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. no. I, want, I, I was really happy because, uh, Gamers Nexus, they did the um, the reviews for both the 7800 and the uh, 7700. Let me set the timer here to see if somebody's watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was looking at the graphs when they showed the graphs of the um, like the benchmark results, and every single graph is like, oh, the 7700 is like within 5 to 10% mm -hmm. of the 6700. Yeah. NVIDIA, right. uh, AMD's doing the exact same shit NVIDIA did. <laughs> like, we're, we're, we're making cards that compete against last gen's products <laughs> give us more money yeah, yeah. We, we're, so we're i'm not very gonna... happy with my purchase <laughs> but but hey but starfield bro yeah we'll see when i have time to actually get into starfield we'll uh, see how well, well, that well runs. And, and then there's by, by the time you 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 uh by the time that rolls around the modders will have cracked it and like the they'll and be, it'll able probably to, like, be running mods. properly yeah yeah like <laughs> <laughs> launch, launch, launch era for Bethesda games is always like, nah. Wait, for, wait for the modders to take a crack at mm -hmm. it, man. Like, I don't it'll, know, be, man. it'll like, be way better. I kind of had like one of those uh, hot take moments because uh, a modder added a uh, DLSS support to it. Mm. Went through and like get all that, and he's like, yeah. If he you put want DRM on it, and someone pirated it. He was like, <laughs> yeah. If you want it, it's like five bucks, and like, yeah, I fucking feel that because that's not like home homeboy didn't just like open a program and click a go damn no. button you know mm -hmm. like five bucks i'm like sure all right and then people just, just watching the outrage like how dare somebody charge money for a, a mod 
Yeah, how uh, how, you how know, dare people when that person is not Bethesda work. and it's not inside the creators club mm. like Skyrim and Fallout 4 do? You? I don't know. They sell mods. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> like they just don't yeah, Bethesda the don't get a cut. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? All right, now let's talk about what I was alluding to. Yes. The Skull Girls, or just Skull Girls, because that's the actual name of the game. Uh, that it, it has a bit of a sordid history in more ways than one, but it's still being actively maintained, and the developers uh, have released a roadmap of sorts. Uh, the, the the big title is When's Marie. So Marie, if you played the um, the story mode, she's the Skull Girl. She's the last uh, character that you need to fight. And yeah, she's becoming a playable character. They say that first it's going to be Skull Girl, uh, Skull Girl's mobile. They're going to release this, uh, the mobile version. Then there will be a playable alpha for uh, the uh, Marie character. And then, of course, there will be the full release, like they've done with the previous three characters that they've already released, kind of like that. So it is... Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I genuinely didn't think that they were ever going to release Marie as a playable character, just because when you do fight her uh, as the last boss, she's massively overpowered. So, yeah. But don't worry, I, they, I, they, just, uh, they just nerfed it. They, they did some Akuma-level nerfs on it. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. some Shao Kahn shit where you fight him, you fight him with the busted AI, and then you fight, a, fight with him, and you're like, oh can't do any of this yeah. stuff yeah um yeah but the new, your new maid waifu she's dropping probably sometime in uh early 2024 uh they're tar- they're hoping for end of 2023 but we all know that's not gonna happen um they are doing the interesting thing about mobile first though because they were talking about the development cycle uh the mobile version is like a significantly more cut down version of the game so it takes a lot less effort to get things up and running in terms of animations so this is where they can like can release something and then iterate on it uh, but the uh, but once uh, that final update co- does come out, the other thing they're adding, which I think is a nice touch, is they're adding um, all full voice acting for all the story characters, which is uh, before it was just like, a, ah, ooh, ah, right? <laughs> like, so now now you actually get some humans reading words and not emoting in anime noises. So when we think about like gaming like that, your first thought is like mobile gaming, like competitive fighting, mobile gaming, and here's here's something that I discovered. I was watching uh, Pink Gorilla was doing a stream from PAX in Seattle, what, last week? They had an entire stage dedicated to competitive online mobile gaming. They were playing shooty pew pew games competitively, tournament yeah. style, like big stage, well, yes. big the, arena. The, the, PUBG and uh, Fork Knife are on mobile, technically. So, like, you had <laughs> the competitors up there on their podiums holding. <laughs> He, that's not very that's not very ergonomic but like I, I, like I, I wonder what you would need to do because like if, if, you, if you look at like starcraft tournaments like if you, if you take away all the flashing lights it's just like 12 nerds sitting in their computers in like two parallel lines going right like yeah. so how do you like how, how do you how do you goose that up how do you make that more more engaging i just couldn't imagine playing an fps on a touch screen <laughs> no more than i can imagine playing a <laughs> Better to fight a game <laughs> on a touchscreen. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I mean, fair, I can sort of see we're, if we're you're old. allowed to pair your Bluetooth controller nope. to your phone and just use that. Nope. No. Hey, listen, listen, we're old. We we don't get it. It's the, the it's the children who are wrong, right? Right. Or it's more of the yeah. The parents will buy a phone for the child, so the child that will be their computer, because chances are that their computer actual computer is a laptop that they got from school it's five years book. ago yeah like yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get it you make do it with what you have there's nothing wrong with that that's why you see a bunch of people asking questions like how do i play the games on the chromebook how do i play, do mm-hmm. this and and hey that uh, gets you interested you're like how could i hack around the limitations and i can go for it yes you know the, like, the limitations a very good way to uh i i guess i guess it's also harder to like install an aimbot on your iphone yes yeah one would hope <laughs> Unless, okay, so if you have a uh, camera gimbal, for example, and you get an adapter to put your phone on, does that count? <laughs> you wave the gimbal around <laughs> and the auto stabilization that sort of keeps everything lined up? <laughs> I don't know, old man. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just say, you, you use what you get. I saw somebody poo pooing uh, some kids on our Linux. And they're like, why is uh, it's uh, Backtrack Linux now? Mm, yeah, Backtrack. I'm like, why or, is that uh, so Cal- popular? Cali. 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 Uh, <laughs> why is that so popular with the Linux users? And they're like, well, it's a bunch of dumb kids being script kiddies. I'm like, yeah, that's how a lot of uh, security experts start, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's script kiddies. At least they're interested in trying to do some shit. Yeah, you know what? They're hoping to find a big hack my neighbor's Wi Fi button, but some are still going to power on through that. Learn about rainbow tables. Just saying. So, so, so summer may not have a powerful enough GPU to run rainbow tables, but one no, day. no, no. <laughs> and that's when larceny comes in. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's when you have a real incentive to start cracking those Wi-Fi networks. Ladies and gentlemen, Linux leads to jail. That's yes. <laughs> Linux uh, yeah. leads to five, five 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 people dead at a shootout at a Wendy's. <laughs> no, that was Windows ME. Windows, I mean. Windows. <laughs> when when do you All right. All right. Back to we AMD. Got, yes. We did news. mention the uh, the new cards coming out. This isn't about the 7700 or the 7800 This, this isn't about Steam anymore either. This is the new section, yes. by the way. <laughs> Uh, this is very much about uh, RDNA 3, yes, so it does technically mean the 7800, the 77, the 76, and the 79 XT and the XTX, which will soon be able to have acoustic limit RPM threshold control, acoustic target RPM threshold control, fan curve, fan minimum P- PWM control, and fan target temperature uh, available directly uh, from the kernel driver. Which is good. It's very good. Uh, the acoustic limit and RPM target, uh, those are new. I'd say the fan curve and minimum speed you could already manage with Mesa and core control. But yeah, no, the acoustic limit's very, very uh, welcome. Especially if you have a 6700 XT like me, the Sapphire Pulse Edition, which only has two fans. And those fans can get loud. So if you say, nah, you just go up to this noise... And uh, just crash the game if, because <laughs> that's usually what happens if you can't go above that. But yeah, the limitation is very much to the 7000 series, which is a big old fuck you from the company that uh, only had the 7600 and the 7900s until this week. So yeah, why, and this, why is, this is this is something <laughs> like you'd think you'd want this on the Steam Deck, right? Like yeah. somewhere where you can more precisely control fan and temperature and all, all that all that other crap. So this being our DNA three only is uh it's kind of a little poo poo as Pedro alludes. Hopefully hopefully this is just the initial work and someone can get this backported because having that functionality I, I don't think there's anything in the new architecture that actually enables this. I think this is just some driver bits that they have turned decided How to turn on. Dare you they clearly say today's update shows another example of how amd is dedicated to linux to which yes dak i saw you 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 typed out what this is my brain i was like cool this is like what nvidia has been doing for the past 20 years yes yeah, they're, they're catching up <laughs> yeah <laughs> on the linux desktop at least is that least, right, uh, Pedro knows <laughs> it, uh, as a former filthy nvidia user Pedro, you're like yeah yes but at least they're making this available on the open source side of things, unlike NVIDIA. So uh, that's good. That's very good. I, I, again, I'm not complaining about more functionality being exposed. I'm just complaining about it being restricted to the 7000 series. The fuck? Sounds like somebody with <laughs> 6000 series. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> so, someone, someone's mad. Consume. Obey. <laughs> I you, will you, not consume. <laughs> you, you you can get some RDNA three going. Oh god damn it! I forgot to get the floppy thing. I'm well, that. you better hurry up because I'm going to fill some time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, maybe you like handheld gaming. Pedro, do you have any handheld gaming devices? Uh, yeah, no, I got one sitting right in front of me here. There you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yep, well, he's good. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you know something's missing with modern handheld gaming devices. That's right, kids. A shell. Ah, That's a laptop. <laughs> no, shut up. That's a clamshell design, like it's, on a mobile a device, because that's how they should all be made. And uh, except for that keyboard. I, what are we talking about? Let's scroll back up. This is the Aya Neo Flip, a handheld gaming PC. Well, again, with a clamshell. I, the idea 
even from way back in the day, we're like flip phones, you know, because we started out with candy bar phones. And I'm like, yeah, oh, that's going to get scratched. And flip phones like, oh, cool. They were like, nope, let's go back. And Jordan, they kind of did the same thing with uh, gaming handhelds, didn't they? They did. Uh, <laughs> there, 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 were, there were candy bars. And then Nintendo had this uh, DS. It was, it was a cool little idea. It has two screens. Uh, this, this, is, this is my OG one. Um, but yeah, uh, it had a clamshell design. It was nice. You kept both screens nice and safe. When you uh, said floppy, is, I thought it was going to be like hanging much on. floppier. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's like pretty floppy. One hinge, maybe just one wire holding it on. It, it's, <laughs> on honestly, it's not stable. But uh, like, so, like my, my, minor, minor jerks, especially while you're, while you're playing, will cause it to like flip up. But th th that's what I mean is like the first thing when, when I see these clamshell designs is how are the hinges? Because like after some generous use, they can kind of get a little crappy and a little little tight. And they're not going to stay at the right angle necessarily you want to be at to get the optimum viewing angles. But like the hardware on here is decent. It's the, that 70 whatever they, they, that all the, the other handhelds are using. 7840 yes. yeah. <laughs> 7840U is like the pretty yeah, the, the, much assume that that's what's going to be powering it. it it's so, in the ROG ally and this the, the, the uh, Legion. Yeah. The first feedback I've seen that keyboard, I just had a good laugh. I'm like, nope, uh, -uh that's not <laughs> possible. Like I would need a pointing device made out of small pointing device. Yeah, that doesn't look super comfortable. That, that that recessed lip doesn't look comfortable either. It looks like it'll cut the circulation off on your thumbs. Uh, yeah, it, it looks very similar to the uh, original GPD Win and the GPD Win Two. Uh, it also looks very similar to the Open Pandora, the Dragon. If you remember that, <laughs> it's uh, I, I Is can that, see that's it? shipping eventually, right? It, it it has shipped okay, okay. It, it has officially shipped so here's what i want here's here's like our first uh, bit of a uh, feedback uh leave a comment send in some hate mail for the show next week would you buy a modern gaming handset that had a clamshell like should, is that something that you would seriously not just like yeah sure whatever Ben, but like why would you or why why are you glad that that is just gone you know because the new switch isn't going to be clamshell we're not going to get a Clam deck, DS2. No, Pedro. Valve here. Rele just released a Steam laptop. <laughs> they can, Pedro, because they're busy releasing the full screen keyboard for the uh, Steam deck. <laughs> See, it's a much beautiful. better gaming. Look be at that. Be yeah. Beautiful, I love it. Yeah, much battery life, you said. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I like the first lines. Like <laughs> the developer says, it's not practical in any way. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, that I agree. It's, yes. <laughs> it's perfect if you're doing a blindfolded speed run of Amnesia: The Dark Descent. You you, you just have your keyboard there, and you can, you can just. Dude, try to play I mean, it. you spill some water on it. Shit gets real interesting. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> like dance buggies. Yeah, no, there's the, but there's like there's definitely some advantages of the clamshell design. Like you have more room to like cram stuff near the monitor. Get more get more space constraints. I'm just thinking about but, tossing it in a bag. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there, uh, there's not the uh, like. Okay, let's make sure it's a bit. Um. Yeah, there, 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 there is certainly very much with the Steam Deck. Uh, I'm gonna put this away in its case, and I'm gonna close the lid. And you know, there's it something up. to be said yeah. about having a case for something, right? They can yeah. just toss it in a drawer and be done with it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like the cl clamshell isn't a bad design. It's just make sure that those hinges are reinforced. Costs more money all. though. Yeah. More oh no! Oh no! I can't afford. Now I definitely can't <laughs> afford my fifteen hundred dollar, seventeen hundred. XTX. Yeah, uh, the uh, one thousand dollar gaming handheld. The other one that Ineo is also releasing. Yeah. You know what? Fuck that, man. <laughs> you joke. I want some clamshell design. I want some hinges on GPU so I can pop that cover off and clean the fans real easy. That'd be nice. Yeah. I want it. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'm not wrong. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, the e easily like modular like stuff where you don't mm -hmm. have to like unscrew shit all the time yeah absolutely yeah. I'd, I'd, like yeah. I, I want to just barely hold on with the magnets so the fans just fall out of it <laughs> <Some, laughs> so that they spin a little too fast and they just take off yeah i can just <laughs> bonk the top of the case man, <laughs> just I, 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 I want a strong enough magnet that it fucks all the mechanical drives in the system <laughs> <laughs> you open the case the screws are bent towards it yeah, you, like your, your your wallet on the other side of the room just starts like slowly inching towards the computer. Ah, uh, of course, Eric Collis, we have ideas. Um, mm -hmm. So this, uh, we talked about it on Wednesday. If you ever get a chance, come listen to us on weekly, daily Wednesdays. But I wanted to bring up here, get your guys' 
thoughts on it because uh i mean it, it, it's just the same uh there's no battle there's no war there's no lines drawn in the mayonnaise but we're an interesting time where Waylon is the future and it's only nine years away at this point <laughs> well uh yeah the, according to oro uh she had a very big write-up which uh she wasn't expecting that it would blow up quite as much as it did but it did so yeah, I got a yeah. reply on Mastodon from the person. They're like, yes. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for t- so we're talking about it again. Ha. <laughs> yeah, welcome, double well, the explosion. Anyway, uh the yeah, no, I've been using Wayland almost exclusively for ever since I got the 6700 XC. And uh, I agree with a lot of the points that she makes. Uh it's like, yes, Wayland what, what, is the future. What's the title of this post again? Uh the title is Wayland Breaks Your Bad Software. <laughs> Which we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> Waylon, uh, yeah, she says that Waylon is it. It is the future, and she quotes Markhan. And if you're going to quote someone to try and make a point and uh, look good doing it, Markhan's probably the one to do it. She also quotes Joshi uh, when it comes to uh, basically talking about how what is it fractional scale? No, it wasn't the fractional scaling that she quoted Joshi. Which what? Be, 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 be. HDR, uh, the game scope stuff. Uh, she quotes Joshi, and she quotes Joshi again for um, what was it? Uh, Here, Pedro, I have another quote from you <laughs> from another guy. You might know him. Uh, <laughs> Pierre Loop Guru. <laughs> yeah, and this is where I found out about it. I follow um, dude on Twitter, and he's like, uh, you know what? Platforms they kind of uh, don't 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 break shit with your Wayland software, uh, Wayland. <laughs> Transition needs to keep breakage at zero, which is optimistic, but I still think is uh, in the right heart. Anything we don't need to teach a generation of third-party developers never to target the Linux desktop ever again. And, you know, this is, yeah, imagine Windows 7, yeah. 8, 10, 11 uh, with a DXGI breaks your bad GDI director all software. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Although, right, right, right. to be fair... Um, Isn't that right? Not sure, right? <laughs> uh, hide the pain, Howard, baby. Microsoft uh, did pull uh, some shenanigans with DirectX 12, and they wanted DirectX 12 to be the sole uh, render API, but... Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, and my, my, Microsoft has never broken user space ever at all. Ever, no. It's it, not it's like been, they wipe people's entire uh, home partitions with a Windows 10 update. Mm-mm. No, that was Mac. <laughs> But yeah, no, as someone who has been using Wayland, I absolutely get the sentiment. But as someone who enjoys video games, and that's one of the issues brought up, there are some games that just straight up don't support Wayland. Yes, if they're targeting SDL or if they don't target X specifically, you can probably make them work with Wayland easily enough. Uh, and what about fictional scaling? Fractional scaling fictional. has... <laughs> fractional scaling is the thing that uh, Wayland fixed that was like the big one that Wayland already had working and it still wasn't ever going to work on X until someone so I some very clever KDE. people found some workarounds yes it was basically it had to be done at the desktop environment level because it's the display server itself just couldn't handle it and yeah outside of Okay, if you have an NVIDIA card and you need X render and you maybe you need a very specific XOR conf, I'm sorry, my condolences, but you're stuck on X for a while. And that's still valid. It, X will probably keep working for your use case for a long time. But fact of the matter is, Wayland does have does do a lot of things right. Yes, there's still stuff that's not there. You can use uh op, um you can use open RDP to do RDP remote desktop. You can use Waypipe instead of SSH X. Uh you can there's there's alternatives for things. It's just the X specific stuff that's never going to come and Oro mentions that on the post yeah. specifically. And like <laughs> here's the thing. I think I think Pierre Pierre's coming from a good place, but I think Mr. Loop Guru is catastrophizing quite a little bit. Because let's be real, most of the people who are producing Linux view builds are doing so because their framework supports it, not because of any real desire to create Linux binaries. And as Oro says, um, if you're using STL or one of the myriad other tools like Unreal, Unity, Godot, who are often using STL. No, how, how, they said that, but could you could you quote how they said it? 
Uh, no, because I don't have the thing right in front of me right now. Um, but I'm gonna uh, or I'll, use I'll something up. like SDL and try not to interact with the display server directly, yeah. and you yeah. get support for other display servers and can more easily port your software to other platforms in the process if right. that's what you're into. Right. So again, get, getting getting back to my point. You know, your 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 framework is often going to support all this stuff, so it's going to be a non-issue. And that's for the very, very minor percentage of folks who are actually producing Linux builds. Everyone else is and for everything else. There's MasterCard or Proton, baby. And I'll, I'll give I'll to 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 the to the anti Wayland crowd. I'll give that. Why not? Wayland really needs to get their shit together. They've been working on that for mm -hmm. a little too long. Um, I know well, they want to get uh, things. Collabra is working on most of that, right? Yeah. Collabora is working on that. They're, they're start they're starting to upstream stuff now, but like I kind of wish they maybe like had a bit more of a free flowing pipe as opposed to waiting to get everything uh, up and running. But I again, this 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 is me backseat managing Collabora, right? Like I don't who the fuck cares what I think. Um, the but the, the the point is Proton exists for everything else. To Pedro's point, all those old games they're not getting updated forever, uh, mm -hmm. and Proton is going to be the preservation mechanism that allows us to play them in the future. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you're on, I think what it boils down to is if you're on x86, x will do you just fine, but we're not just in an x86 world anymore. We got ARM, we got RISC-V, we have stuff that just doesn't play nice with how X is designed and Wayland is designed with these kinds of architectures in mind. So, and that was we, Mark we, Hans point. That was like that yeah. the whole quote at the start of the article is like, yeah, we can't use X for Azahi because it's just not going to work. We need so, something that's actually properly structured. So we <laughs> this 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 is eventually the band aid's gonna come off. This is just like the longest fucking hairiest band aid we have to remove from one of our arms. It's come it's coming eventually. I th I think uh, I think we're moving in a direction where like now stuff like synergy, now stuff like uh like free RDP screen sharing, all that the re really the the big barrier the, here the is the barrier uh, synergy I, thing. I went it, ahead and blew a hole in that on Wednesday because that's bullshit. That was wrong. That no? is incorrect. I'm, I, yeah, you can go back and look at the notes. I can find you the GitHub issue from the creators because Barrier is no longer man, maintained anymore. There's another project. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, that, from the creators of Barrier who were actively maintaining it. And there's a what, pull what, request. What, yes. what's, it, what's it called now? Uh, I can pull it up. Give me a second. Because uh, I, I thought Barrier was the new new. Now I'm, I'm, I'm behind. So yeah. uh, um, Here, what we're going to do, everybody, is go over to LinuxTeamCast.com and uh, <laughs> click on going. the support button. Wait, no, that's not that part of the Yeah, click <laughs> it. Um, what is it is uh burp, burp, here we go input late is input late. yes okay so yeah here here's the open uh but they're like you know stabilized like it still crashes man but so okay so the the but my point is work work is being done there's a lot a lot of the stuff aside work's from being that, done but what i'm very like, cautious of and very cautious of and i went over this on wednesday is be very clear with what does work and what does not work because sure, the worst that, thing you can do for Wayland adoption is lie to fucking people. That's true, intentionally or unintentionally. And there and there's and there is still the accessibility issue. Uh, they are adding more and more portals. But and, and again, to Oro's point, a lot of the stuff isn't necessarily Wayland's fault. It is X is a massive monolith that leaks information, and so everyone is able to pull that information, and it makes application development really, really, really easy because it's an insecure fucking nightmare land. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. Some, some we're, 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 mo we're moving in, uh, in a direction. Hopefully one day Wayland will take it over. I mean, uh, here I, I, I'm, I'm all pro Wayland. I'm still fucking sitting on X on NVIDIA because I, I'm, I'm not brave and enough. If you have an NVIDIA card, you probably should stay on X because if you want access to like the NVIDIA driver settings, that only works correctly on X. Uh, and all of the settings were made for x so none of them actually do anything in wayland anymore uh so yeah, yeah it's yeah. nvk uh, is coming uh, she does mention that nvk is oh coming, yeah the, but the, the, the whole use nouveau thing yeah that that that, that, that is a complete non-starter that is that is yeah a no point. It, it literally just got to the point where it can reliable reliably put things on screen it's not good or performant in any way don't <laughs> just don't tell people to use that right yet. right okay. and i mean that's that's the same thing even under x when you see it like just use the open source and video drivers like no linus you use that <laughs> to download the closed source in video right. drivers and then and then have a working right. computer uh and you know again i brought this up multiple times the hardest thing with x is you're up against good enough and 
for like 90% more than that. Like most, we, we talked about that, I think on Tuesday. We do uh, Filthy Casuals. We race uh, Truck Mania 2. Come play with us. It's puzzle platforming. But in the after show, we're like, so what's everybody running? Because I knew we were going to talk about it on Wednesday. And I'm like, yeah, Waylon. Yeah, I'm doing Waylon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm on Waylon. Like, here, type this into your terminal. I'm like, oh, I'm running X. Huh, I'm running X. Oh, me too. I'm running X. Like, people don't, nor should they even fucking care. Like, yeah. it should be that super transparent. And Waylon Cylinder Heavy Development. Things for me, like, XFCE doesn't exist yet. Like, once that... Well, that, so, so I, th- I think we got to clarify, too. It's not necessarily Wayland. It's, like, the infrastructure that... It's all the supporting infrastructure that Wayland doesn't build in. It's, yes. the, it's the portal stuff. Yeah. Uh, with, yeah, because, like, Wayland... Well, it, it, Wayland's the catch-all, though. When I say Wayland, I'm talking to the people who are yeah. listening to the show. Like, oh, what's that? I'm like, it's the, it's the thing. You don't need to know the... Yeah, because well, actually, Wayland is not uh, the, the graphical server in the same way that X is. Right. Wayland is just a set of protocols but, right. which but, define but, a graphical ser- uh, server at the compositor level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I think we, we do need to have that sort of co- like caveat in place, right? Because otherwise things can kind of get lost in the weeds of, oh, this is a Wayland problem. It's like, no, it's not a Wayland problem. It is this facility, this like, there's no facility to securely access this information. Would this problem exist if Wayland didn't? Yes, it would and, still it would still exist uh, because you can still grab all this information Wayland, in a secure manner, right? Like for a lot of the issues that I have, because I have a 144 hertz monitor and two 60 hertz monitors uh-huh. with wildly different resolutions and wildly different everything, and setting per uh, per display refresh rate and per display scaling on X with NVIDIA. I needed that XRCon file and it needed to be very, very specifically done. And I had that saved in a bunch of different places because I couldn't lose it. Otherwise, this setup wouldn't work on AMD on Wayland. It works out of the box. I can set this one at 144 hertz. I can enable and disable the variable refresh rate with a tick of a box. And the other two monitors don't even blink. It, it Wayland does fix a lot of things. But there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work properly. It's yeah, under the, the- heavy development. <laughs> and that's cool, man. Like, you know, you always keep in mind, though, you know, how, what's X been around for? 30 years now? More, in right? We, 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 we started, almost 40. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, so, we, 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 were, we were saying that like five years ago. Right. So it's been, it's been at least five Let's years. Let's just it at, at least three decades. And it's hacks built upon hacks built upon hacks because it's a 30 year old piece of software. Now, Wayland's been around for like 15. You would say actively developed like in any meaningful momentum probably for about the past five. Uh, 30 years from now, Wayland's going to be in the same spot because that's the life cycle of old software is hacks upon hacks upon hacks. I don't, I don't necessarily know about this because this is at least being built in a more modular way than, than X. And it has clear like- defined rules of <laughs> yeah, how everything I is mean, going to be implemented. Optimism is a good thing. <laughs> It's, I, I, it's been I, I, working I, I, for now. That's why we have I'm, like portals for everything, like Jordan mentioned. But but, but and, and again, part of, part of that is the hindsight of X. We like mm-hmm. again, we 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 know now what we need because we had thirty years of nightmares trying to get this shit working on X. It's like, wouldn't it be better if this was built this way? And but that's also thinking about like we're going to be dealing with the same type of technology, like as far as like display technology is going to hopefully be radically different than it is today. Once we years. get, yeah, when you plug the HDMI cable in the back of your skull yeah, and you, yeah, you, you well, go into the matrix, the laser six connection to the, <laughs> the Hollow Four, yeah. <laughs> so you're like, well, we don't know. Uh, I I got my repla- eyes replaced with LG Cyber Eyes, and now I can just play video games in my brain. <laughs> I immediately followed by the downfall of human civilization. Miss, Mr. Bato, Mr. Bato, get <laughs> right. off the couch. No, dude. Um, yeah. Like, whatever, there's no war. Use what you want. Like, nobody's, uh, software-wise, I mean, that's up to you as a software developer, games developer. You want to break X? Fuck, fuck around, find out. You, you use the abstractions that are You can break X very easily. Yeah. You, you, you can you're, break X very easily. People like uh, Iculus has done a lot of work in uh, SDL yeah. crew to make it pretty simple where you don't have to worry about whether or not it's X or where it's yeah. Wayland mm-hmm. or it's Apple and- or it's Windows. And 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 to and again to Pierre's point, that's where it should be. That's where the separation should be of like, mm-hmm. hey, we've implemented all this stuff for you. Go go use mm-hmm. it. Um, I this this again, and it really this conversation is a really a mood point because like, how many people are actually building their engines from scratch? This, this is shit, shit that like Epic Games and, and Unity need to worry about, not uh, not like 
Well, we're, we're thinking 100% game. I'm just talking about application. Yep. I mean, I don't know what the abstraction is with like things with a widget tool, you know, like GTK and QT. Mm. Oh. Uh, QT is multi platform by default. GTK technically does work on Windows. Which version of QT? <laughs> At least four. The public. I or the fuck you pay us money version. Uh, I think they're all technically <laughs> <laughs> multi-platform. It's just uh, whoever's going to pay uh, just goes. Now nah, let's just use the uh, the quickly refreshing one because it's free. Mm. <laughs> right. On. All right. Uh, if you could play games with wine, you probably know about Proton, which also means that you know about the XVK. We were just talking about Joshi 2 earlier. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, DXVK 2.3, it's out. It has some cool stuff like support for e VK EXT swap chain maintenance. There's a one at the end of that. I, that was the No, no, that's correct. It, it, is, needs, is the it, okay. it yes. needs the one. It needs the one? Wow, then I guess I copied it properly. Um, it allows you to disable VSync without some games eating shit uh, when they change their, pre their present interval on a per frame basis. That's going to be nice because some folks don't want the VSYNCs. Um, a bunch of the options have been uh, changed or have been consolidated. Uh, the DXG, the DXGI full screen stuff, uh, DXVK, D9VK stuff has all been merged into one uh, one option, so that's a little easier to manage. And there's uh, better logic in this version for separating out stuff for different GPU vendor hardware solutions, i.e. for having a separate code path for XCSS versus DLSS and so on and so forth, which is always nice to have as uh, these technologies continue to get adopted and games continue to be worse and worse performing, requiring more and more driver intervention. Yeah, and the uh, the 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 thing that actually caught my eye was the VK KHR present wait is only triggered when the frame is actually being presented rather than when it finishes rendering. But before it's being presented, this caused some uh, f uh, delay in well, it, it, it's effectively input latency because you're already sending the input for a frame that you haven't even seen on screen, and that's already being take it into account so this should r reduce the perceived uh, input latency if your game is using uh, vsync and um, has support for that particular variable which is very good especially when you have a system with say a constrained uh battery life and if you enable the um if you enable vsync the battery lasts for a heck of a lot longer. So that's good. Less input latency on the deck, please. <laughs> and this has got a couple of fixes like Total War, Halo Online, Far Cry 2, uh, whatever racing room racing experience is, but that was important to somebody. And the, the Tommy game was those racer. <laughs> that will never die. The Sims 2. People love that shit. Some, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I'm playing the Sims 2, man. Titanfall and Tomb Raider Anniversary has some uh, improvement. And they fixed. Um, HDR for Elden Ring and a bunch of other games. All if you're using the XVK on Windows, that won't work. If you're uh, using the XVK on Windows Seven in order to be able to play Elden Ring, which is a <laughs> the X12 game, uh, yeah, that won't work. So keep that in mind. <laughs> well, a game that definitely needs some HDR support is Amnesia, Pedro. Yeah, <laughs> the Dark Descent. Look at that. See this? This is way too bright. I mean. <laughs> You can actually make out some detail. Yeah, you, you, you can see the pattern on the carpet. This, that's that's yeah, unacceptable. That's complete rubbish. Like that's borderline unplayable. Might as well just go and play Mario Sunshine instead of this. So why are we talking about this? Well, this is uh, kind of interesting. This is a rebuild of the graphics portion of the HPL2 engine with DirectX 12 for Windows and Vulkan for Linux. Which my first thought is like, you know, you can use Vulkan on uh, Windows too, right? But maybe somebody wanted to get some experience with DX12. Current features. Well, uh, graphics backend rework, Forge. They've removed bookkeeping for the viewport size. Oh no, drop usage of OpenGL. That's good. <laughs> Replace the existing SSAO implementation with HBAO. Neat. Fix the parallax occlusion mapping. Pretty cool. Random ideas. This is where it starts getting fun. Replace the Newton physics with Jolt. Okay. <laughs> mess around with ray tracing support with Vulcan and DirectX also neat uh, various collection and improvements for the editor um, okay alright you, 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 uh, you got my attention as long as you include a rocket launcher <laughs> yeah, can, I'd can be you rocket jump proper an amnesia first person, 
shooter <laughs> yeah it was like a proper shooter built with the I amnesia mean, engine no joke for i mean if you've ever played the game go back and look at the video version of the screenshot that we put up like if there's ever a game like i don't know if we necessarily need ray tracing because like how much darker do you want this damn game to get unless <laughs> unless you're ray tracing that rocket launcher then go, go right ahead <laughs> um the yeah, how dark and Jordan's like HD. Oh, yeah. oh like, like oh, I just cut the monitor off you to get yeah, the same wait, effect. Wait, we we got a Game of Thrones season eight. This shit, man, like completely un completely indistinguishable from like the blackness. Like, ah. oh man, it's always fun when you're playing on HDR and you try to jack up the uh, contrast and. Uh, we it's like we, you have no power here <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we were joking about this in the free pre super shows about the amnesia blindfolded speed run Which we, found, we found one guy one he guy tried. attempt to he part tried. One. yeah part one. he did a part one <laughs> that was part it. one that was it he tapped out he's like nope we're good um i've always been i've always kind of kept my eye on like because uh they open source this engine uh forever ago nobody's ever mm -hmm. really did anything to it which is usually a sign of like bad documentation or just random like you know, no one went, it's like, why do I want to familiarize myself with this code base? I'll never use it for anything. And I said it when they released it, I was like, somebody put me, just give me a gun. Give me a gun. Take care of the zombie dogs <laughs> in the beginning. But I was having some thoughts, a couple of things on this. Because I just want everything to be asymmetrical multiplayer now. Um, you got bit by the deadlight by daylight bug. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Uh, let, let's go back to the first one and let, uh, let me try to get to the game. Well, there's a bunch of uh, online uh, zombie puppers where you can play as the zombie puppers coming after me and all oh, that stuff. Uh, that hammer, zombie that, puppers. Yeah, <laughs> that hammer you're trying to defend yourself with. I I, I wonder how much that of would the be terror... terrifying. That alienate got shit on those puppers. <laughs> I, I wonder how much of the terror would be undercut if, like, every time the the player jumped in like Penumbra or Amnesia, he just went. Hup, hup, hup. <laughs> <laughs> Just full, full on the quake, quake man in there. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just completely undercuts the terror. It's like spiders are crawling on your face. Oop, oop. Uh, Bunny hopping through the level. Yeah. I'd be. Listen, there's so many things to do. Like graphical improvements, they go for it. A uh, special place in our dark black hearts because this is like one of the like old school uh, modern generation of uh, like one of the first of what you would consider. Some of you youths, after the fall of um, Loki and whatnot, uh, this is like part of our humble, like that humble yeah. Linux open source cross platform bundle. Like, holy shit. A humble indie bundle four, or was it three as well? I, I think it was four. I, there, 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 there was like a, the, the Frozen Bite one wasn't, a hum, wasn't like a humble indie bundle, but it was like in the yeah. middle of them because they had the, that gave all the like the trines and stuff. And yeah, like it, 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 it was weird back then because they had, Back when the humble indie bundle was like a thing, and they're like, "Ah, oh, it's indie. This is the the, the one with the Linux games." In I it. would like to just uh, Scott has pointed out uh, in shot realm that somebody is testing it on an amnesia. Good, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone can, was can, working on that kind of mod. <laughs> that, is, okay, that, um, I'm trying to figure out: is that a pistol or a shotgun? And it in the case of the latter, can you do dual shotties in amnesia? <laughs> oh no, 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 no! If you're gonna do that, we need bullet time. It's, no amnesia, but it's super hot. <laughs> yeah, Max Payne: The Dark Descent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Oh man. Uh, all right. Our last them? story. Oh, uh, oh no, no. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah we 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 got uh, we got one last story. We got to talk about our good friend Ethan Lee, aka Flippity uh, Yeah, and uh, he is. Uh, he has a new page on his website, and he is saying that he is offering a new service amongst the myriad importing services he offers, and that is game preservation. Because, you know, the game comes out, and after a couple of years, libraries that are using it are out of date, maybe a newer version of the OS uh, that uh, it was originally running on is out, and it doesn't quite isn't quite compatible because Windows 13 has decided that it is running fully in the cloud and only runs through ECMA script. What are you odd about? Uh, Windows 10 is the last version of Windows ever. Microsoft said so. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, time goes on, and maybe you don't want to spend your effort uh, as, as a game developer uh, making sure that your game continues to run. Ethan's willing to do that for you, uh, uh, and he's willing to do that for you at a fairly low cost. And he does. He offers this already as a service. If you uh, get a game ported by him, he'll basically keep your game up and running forever. And that's because he is a major contributor to SDL. And so all of the supporting stuff that he does is basically: I take your game files, 
I recompile your engine, and then I copy your game files to the new thing, and that's it. It all works. Um, and so he's offering to do that to you. He supports uh, Linux, Windows, uh, Intel Macs, because no one has given him a uh, ARM Mac yet, uh, original Xbox, and um, yeah, and the Nintendo Switch. And uh, in, in addition to uh, in addition to Steam Deck verification certification, uh, moving away from UWP, migrating XNA tiles, FNA, and uh, even doing public source code releases. We were just talking about how Amnesia mm -hmm. released their source code. Yep. If you are interested in doing that, Ethan will help you get that sorted out and we'll do so in a way where your code is easily maintainable and supportable and you're not going to be answering support tickets in the next five years from someone who's like, I tried to compile your game and it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so all this to say, fucking hire this man. This guy has broken his back to make Linux gaming the thing that it is today. And I think he deserves your patronage. So, yes, this does bring a couple of things. Um, you know, definitely you've been following the show for a long time because that's how we used to get games. We had to wait for ports. And for, you know, no joke, Ryan C. Gordon was the Linux gaming industry for the better part of the odds. He really was. And Flippit got in on the game about a decade ago. He was, he was just a kid, too. It was, like, right out of college. Pretty young. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty young. He, he, he tried the uh, school teaching, and he's like, nope. Uh -uh. Uh, and went into this pretty good. Then we have companies like Feral. Then we had Aspire and we just had to sit and wait. We had to sit and wait. Now, the reality we live in in 2023 though, this is like, you got to take the good with the bad, like the bonus thing we've seen. And you know, wine's been there the entire time, but valve launching proton and making it that one play button, you know, steam decks, all these lovely things. One of the knock on effects of that. Was the incentive to do a Linux native build? Almost non-existent right now. And even when you come up, and Jordan, you brought about, like, that's going to end up being our uh, compatibility layer, which is going to be one. So I was happy to see that Ethan's also offering switch ports, because that's, that's where, where Feral went, real quick. Like, within, I would say, the first four months of Proton being out, we saw Feral's like, hey, let's... uh. Let's move down the line a little bit. Let's switch up our business model. And that's what Feral does. Feral doesn't do Linux. But there's no money in it right now. But I still think there's probably service with uh, Switch, Xbox, and Mac. What do you guys think? For sure. And Mac like OS, definitely, especially the newer versions we mentioned many times during the show already. But yeah, the Switch and whatever console the Nintendo is going to release next is a very, very, very big market. So, <laughs> and 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 again, like this isn't some fucking Joe's Pudding Shop. Um, Ethan has like proper infrastructure in place for like creating long-term maintainable ports. That's everything is based off of SDL, uh, or if if it's XNA based, he's using FNA, which mm -hmm. is. What he has that under like a 15 second port now because you run a script and your game he is just done. drops like, the files in, <laughs> they're done. <laughs> yeah, like you, you, you will get a high quality result from this guy. So, like, for sure, for sure, consider this if you are, yes, if you're an hire if you the are extremely a, sexy man to maintain your game. And this you is know, so, he's so pretty. He's I'll like, go way ahead too and say, <laughs> head over to LinuxGameCast.com, find the show notes, or go to flippityjibbitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybitybityb
Yeah. Sounds good. This is from Leon, possibly the professional. And uh, he says, <laughs> when reviewing uh, Empty Clip 2.0, uh, LGC. What do you 5, think 6, Hollywood's going to get desperate enough to make a sequel to Leon the professional? Uh, they got to wait till Harvey Weinstein gets out of prison, I guess. I don't know. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> Um, while reviewing uh, Empty Clip uh, 2.0 uh, LGC 564, you complained about the strange controls. Well, I'm here to defend ESDF. It gives you access to more keys than WASD while also allowing for more convenient finger positioning. Your index finger goes on the F key, which has that little bump so you don't ha need to look down to know that you're in the right place. I bet if you give it a chance, it won't take long to retrain your muscle memory, and you'll never look back. Read more about our Lord and Savior on httpuseesdf.org. <laughs> Let's agree that the real crime here is the dev forcing a choice on its users. No settings for you may be a strategy that works on a console, but PC gamers, especially those on Linux, expect some more customization. And I think that's a, that's a fair enough point. Yeah. That, that, um, that's, some Geo, that's some GeoCities, baby. <laughs> Hang on, we got testimonials. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that, that is a real website. Okay, no, uh, fine. <laughs> You know, I didn't copy that to check if it was a real website or not. <laughs> yes. I, oh. Um, hang on. We, uh... uh... I have a counterpoint to the counterpoint. All right. Which is, uh... What about people who don't even use WASD or any of the keys on that particular side of the keyboard unless they're actually typing? Uh, what about people like myself? You know, who IJKL. use the... I mean, mm, I'm trying no. to do a little bit of research here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. See if it matches up with one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it turns, it turns out the Zodiac Killer was just using Dvorak the entire time. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, people like myself who uh, have a limited range of uh, finesse in uh, one of his hands, so I use my right hand on the directional arrows on the right side of the keyboard, and I use, you know, control shift, enter sometimes, and uh, zero, one, four, and seven, along with page down and then delete, because those are the keys that are around the directional arrows, and everything else is mapped to the mouse. That's also why I have, I have an 11 button mouse. <laughs> I, why, why don't you use home, delete, end, and page down for movement? Um. Too easy. No, quite the opposite, actually, because I don't have fingers. So I have to basically use uh, the uh, little uh, Ho home, delete, end, page down the things above your. No, no keys? The, the, I have to use my uh, half a thumb to basically go up or down and then roll to go left or right. And if I have other keys where my thumb would roll, I would press that key accidentally. That's why I like to use the directional arrows, because there are no keys immediately next to them. They're significantly far away that I can move with accuracy without hitting keys that I don't mean to. I, I, th I think Katana Steel has the best point. If you're not navigating using the arrow keys on the numpad, eight, four, six, and two, you're a psychopath. <laughs> oh, you could get one of those old. Um, no, that's this is why I have a wireless number pad because I use that for my toes. Mm. Let's just, just play it all descent style, baby. Six D O F. Dude, that's how we used to have to roll back in the day. It's like, hey, we, you make do. I mean, life finds a way, even if you use like quartz or a. And I'm on some website now with like I, I, a million I, 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 made up. Yeah, like, dude, there's stuff in here that you just like. What now? Now you're just making stuff I'm, up. I'm sure they, the designers of those keyboard layouts, layouts were actively fucking with us. Like, they're just like, man, someone's gonna actually install this on their fucking computer. Yeah, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, the the Neo, uh, 2004, and W. Uh, 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 Neo uh, Velt. So, you know, you know, style. <laughs> home, home, homework of the day. If you use a non qwerty keyboard layout, send us some fucking hate mail. Oh, and you're what, willing what? to prove that you can do a typing test with the one too, because a bunch of people yeah. are like, sure, I use the Dvorak all the time. He's like, you should yeah. show me 35 words per minute. Yeah. It, People who game on Dvorak, 
how what, what do you do what what's what's the what's the what's the thing right like well you see i've always thought about it i think we all did it like you know the first time in your young life you're like what is this alternate devora keyboard thing oh we should learn that but then you immediately was like i might have to use another keyboard that's not the devora keyboard so that would be confusing so let's I- not I got reverse trolled by my friend because I did too good a job convincing him that, that Dvorak was the superior layout and mm-hmm. that he actually adopted it. And now I can't use his computer anymore because I don't know how to use Dvorak. You know, there is <laughs> something to be said for that, though, wasn't there? Right. Uh, that, that, that is an added layer of security. It's like. <laughs> you know what? I'm just I, I, I always register white elephant gifts for Christmas time. It was like Dvorak keyboards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> might be a thing w- welded Dvorak keyboard so you can't even like change the keycaps out yeah no uh, the, the homework for next week is what is your uh, <laughs> key combination to switch from Dvorak to back to the sensible layout <laughs> and what, what is it different on Dvorak and QWERTY or is it the same and what is it go for it send us your thoughts and keys give, give us those keys S- send us some game keys just for fun. Why don't uh see? I still want like a legitimate owl as I smack myself on my glass desk. Uh, yeah, I want that flat piece of glass multi touch that I can just swipe and like work on as a keyboard. Not I, that- I always wanted to try like the leap motion motion gesture stuff. I know they've made some like advances on that. They have like the leap two now. Mm. Yeah, I, want, like, I, I just want that. You know, basically what you do on, you know, uh, your mobile. Like, I, I want that keyboard experience, but I want it embiggened for the desktop. Like, give me 10-point touch. Let me go ham with it. Let me customize the hell out of it. I'm just do, you, do, you, do you want swipe for a desktop? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I never use it, but it better be there, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, because swipe is useful if you're just using your thumb and you go there. <laughs> I'll, I'll mess you up in racing games all of a sudden. I'm like, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah, sw- swipe in Quake or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hey, we want to thank you for making this show possible. If you want to thank us for making this show possible, smash that support button, fam. We got a bunch of different ways to help us out. If you can just share the show, tell some people about it. Don't tell cats about it because cats are just ornery as fuck. And we don't really, yeah, I'm just saying, man. But, you know, we got Patreon, we got LibrePay, we got the PayPals, we got the crypto bits, and we got Amazon Wishlist. You want to pick up something for the show, for the studio, for the Jordan, for the Pedro, for the Jill, make sure you include a note so we can read it aloud on the air. Amazon storefront, if you're looking for things like what I held up at the beginning of the show, it should, there it is. A little cheap. How much was it? 12 bucks. Yeah, if you're looking for it for me. Yeah. You don't have to buy it on Amazon, just buy it anywhere, just if you're curious about what's in the show. And of course, we get our merch store and Humble affiliate. I do want to thank this week, which is kind of weird. I was like, what is this? Get, get the random email from PayPal. Yeah, right? Like, I'm like, oh, what's <laughs> what the why, why, why are you emailing me, PayPal? What's wrong? Which is because PayPal's done a bunch of policy changes over the past like two weeks. I'm like, what is it now? Like, what other feature are you ripping away? Um, no, Holger sent in a PayPal donation. Hey, thank you. thank you so much. And I was like, oh, cool. That's dope as fuck. Uh, thank you for your support. Always, you can sub to us on Twitch. If you want to come play with us on Tuesdays and Fridays, you want to do the Shrek Mania thing, use your Bezo bucks, sub with Twitch, hook up our Discord, come check it out. It's like doing it for free. You don't get any ads on our channel. Pedro is uh, not doing that because I meant to say Jordan. I get you too Jordan. confused. Pardro. <laughs> the combination of it, it's it's like if, if it's like if Pedro and I do the fusion dance, it's like, like yeah! well, and now I'm upset. I was like, wait, I should have handled that better. <laughs> I should have been like, and now Pedro's gonna tell you what Jordan does. <laughs> on Pro Thursdays. Drum. Jordan's t- streams on Thursdays. Lately, uh he's been doing Baller's Gate 3 with MT. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly Beastwick too. We we got up. We got two more slots right. open. See, so. I, I, I health my tongue at one of these Beastwicks. Like you got room for yeah. one, and I wanted to type him like, "You're not gonna show. You ain't gonna show up." And I, then yeah, Jordan I, I was mean, like, "Yeah, you don't show up, buddy." So. Yeah. I, I, he, he, he he was he was warned, man. I don't know if I. He's more than welcome to a everybody, show. Everybody, yeah, it, everybody's it, welcome. Yeah. He, it's not an airport, though. You know, you don't like have to. Yeah. Be like, you, you, you gotta you gotta show up. You gotta show up like 15 minutes early. That that's it, right? Like, yeah, 
don't don't show up the time that your plane is leaving Preparation, because Preparation, yes. <laughs> yeah. Just just a little heads up and uh yeah. Have fun watching that. All right, everyone. We're gonna cue some music and uh call it a show. If you want to get in touch with us, well, how do you get in touch with me? Very easily. If you can catch me, I, I'm like a dirty pair of socks ripping off through your living room. If you can get your hands on me. I'm still on the uh, zitter. You can find me there at Vinstone. We have a federated timeline, mass.linuxemcast.com. You can always leave a comment anywhere we have things going on. As you know, if you're a beautiful party patron, you can holler at me in our Discord, or if you're on IRC, that's all linked together, so I'll find you there as well. Well, I'm Jordan. You can type, you can find me on the internet by typing into your QuizRT keyboard, uh, x.com or twitter.com or mass.lynchschemecast.com. I'm at Frojo at mass.lynchschemecast.com and at Burning Fool on whatever the fuck Elon's calling it now. Yeah, no, I'm not going to say anything because I'm still using the native Portuguese keyboard uh, <laughs> layout. So you can find me on Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at unaccounted4 with the actual number 4 at the end. So shout at me there. <laughs> I just want to like light up God Save the Queen during that with your Portuguese keyboard <laughs> layout. <laughs> but she dead, though. <sighs> Never some credits. What if I hit the right button? <laughs> no, give us more money. Shut up. <laughs> Let me see that throng. <laughs> that weird blue makeup. Oh my god. I got. I gotta say though, the actress who plays Hera, the the green chick, those pants make her ass look amazing. We gotta thank our advisors, Omega, <laughs> Arthur, and our executive producers: Bob Bram, Scott Show, Tom Cast, Mike G, Drummer, Tomas, Hakim, David, Eshep, and Ian, and our little Nicky fans with also amazing asses: Super Deathstone, Empty, Glory Segrol, Blasphemia, and Nubbin. And we're no Ryder X, Mac, and Ryder, Ry- 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 yeah, Trudgy, <laughs> Veritanuta, Justin, Nubbin, Darkwing, System G, Dunsing, Joe, Ogie One, and Kyrilla, making up the sea monsters. With the uh, death notes Cheerlings. now so very tiny. Incredible Thank you lyric. all so much, like Jalo and uh, Piper and oh. Aromatic Dev. Tim. <laughs> Tim. Tim. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux, New World, and Aldius, and Noctilus, Johnny, Shep, Gametron, Unoid, DS, and Joe, Aromatic Dev, and Kai Jory. Thank you for picking up stuff for our little Linux. You are all too. truly wonderful. Now. Very sexy asses, all of you. <laughs> Full cheek. Calm down, Vader. <laughs> Your booty is mine. <laughs> Time to fire everybody. We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>